going through, and they took time to go and not complain, and they'd go to that person, and they would raise them up in prayer, they would raise them up in love, raise them up in compassion, and that person would never know what kind of shape they came to them in because they were moved towards them with compassion and not judgment, and they prayed for them. And that's what Jesus did here. Now, this was a bad time. Uh, John the Baptist was Jesus' first cousin, but now he was gone. So he saw this whole crowd of people. Now, Jesus was just like that. And you know, every church, I think, and every Christian should be like that. You remember back when the Jews and didn't get along in the north and the south, I believe it was, they split apart. And they had differences and they both split. And they were captured. One side was with one group of people. The other side was taken by the other group of people. Now there's one still stuck to that old self-righteous uh, law that you don't have anything to do with anybody that's not a Jew. You don't have anything to do with anybody that's not a Jew. Do you know that I was kind of brought up that way? If somebody didn't live like we did or wasn't like us, then you don't have anything to do with them. Now, I remember my dad, we lived on a farm, and he, he would go to Flemingsburg, and these Jewish people ran a store there. And, you know, he would not buy from them because he had it in his mind and in his heart that the Jews had killed Jesus. And actually, it was the Roman soldiers that killed Jesus and crucified him. But this is what was spread around. And one time he brought home a tarpaulin. And he brought it because it was cheap. And, of course, they didn't go to church. He didn't know anything about the Bible. But he brought it. And he brought it home. And he said, I hated to buy this from that Jew. But I, it was good and it's cheap, so I brought it. So, you see, you might as well love people because a certain situation will bring you down to what you might call their level somewhere along the way. So you might as well be like Jesus and love them for what they are, not for what they are, but who they are, and, and give them love and compassion. <clears throat> now there was a lady one time that five men, you know when you find somebody in the church, you see them through the week, maybe they failed, they made a mistake, maybe they said the wrong word. We're not supposed to bring a board together and vote them out of the church. We're supposed to bring the church together and pray them back in the church. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's what we're supposed to do. Yeah, well, first, I don't know if I can do that. I think, no, you'd rather judge than to be compassionate. Jesus did not judge these people. Jesus knew in his heart, if these people have any hope at all, it's going to be through the love that I show them. Because I kind of figure these people had never had compassion before. I kind of figure this was a group of people that didn't know what love was. I kind of figure they were downtrodden and so on. And they had sickness and they had disease and they were hungry. And But most of all, they saw something that Jesus had done before. And they said, if there's any hope in us, we're going to find it in this man called Jesus. I thank God for the time when I knew that if there's any hope at all, I was going to find it in that man called Jesus. And if there's any hope for you tonight, any hope for your life, any hope for you ever getting to heaven, you're going to have to find it in that man called Jesus. Amen. You might go to a different church. They might not want you. They might not like you. Find you one that knows Jesus Christ. I heard of a man who went to church, and he had found the Lord, and he was searching for a church where he could serve God. And he expected love and so on. He wasn't dressed too well. And so the pastor told him, said, we've got a dress code. And when you come back, you've got to wear better clothes than that. He said, buy you some better clothes and come back so you'll fit in. Brother, let me tell you, when you put on the robe that Jesus Christ has for you, you automatically fit in. It don't matter about your overalls, about your shoes. You automatically fit in when you find, get put on that new coat that Jesus gives you. And said so he came back and dressed just like he was. And pastor told him again, he said, how come? He said, come back next Sunday. Now, I want, I want you to be right. If you're going to come to church here, you've got to be like we are. You've got to act like us, and you've got to dress like us. Come back the next Sunday, same way. Pastor said, I thought I told you to dress up like we do. And I told you to ask God about it. I told you three Sundays to pray about it. 
And now, what's your excuse for coming back dressed like you are? And those old overalls, it's not too clean, and so on. Those old shoes, it's got holes in them. He said, did you pray about it? He said, yes. I asked the Lord, I said, Lord, what can I do to get in that church? He said, son, I don't know. I've never been in there myself. <laughs> so he was moved towards them with compassion, and he healed their sick. Now, there was a woman that was out of this sect where the Jews had said, we're better than everybody else. We're pure-blooded Jews, and we'll not be contaminated. They forgot that Jesus came. They forgot that Jesus was walking upon earth. They forgot that the Son of a living God had came and grace was coming in and the law was going out. That if you got saved, you could keep the law and still die lost. But thank God, you can't die lost if you have Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Amen. You can't die lost if you've got Jesus. Ah, the Lord. And so they separated. And so there were the Samaritans, they were called. They wouldn't call them Jews anymore because it wasn't good enough for them. Well, the name on your church doesn't amount to a whole lot. You know that? Oh, I've been this for 45 years and I wouldn't be anything else. Well, I've been a Christian for almost 63 years and I wouldn't be anything else. Praise God. I'm glad that I found the Lord. But they wouldn't have anything to do with them. And all of a sudden, here comes this Jewish preacher like something you had never seen. Well, a forerunner before him, his first cousin, John the Baptist, the one that stood on the river bank of Jordan and said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He was dressed in camel's hair and, and, and eat locusts and wild honey. You think he could get in the pulpit of a society church today? Oh, praise God, let me tell you, he might have a little trouble getting in here, some folk, but... I'm telling you, he had the Spirit of God upon him. And here come this Jewish preacher, and he sat out on a well top in Samaria. And the disciples had gone to buy food because they needed to eat like everybody else. But Jesus said, I have much needs, go through Samaria. They probably kind of wondered. Jesus is a Jew. Jesus is a Jewish preacher. Jewish is a uh, Jew, and, and the disciples might have thought, why does he have need to go through Samaria? Jesus tonight has need to come through Tolesboro, Lewis County, Mason County, Fleming County, and all over the world. Jesus sees a need that he should be there because God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him, oh hallelujah, shall have everlasting life. They shall be saved. Jesus had a need one night at Muses Mill Church to come by and touch this boy that didn't know anything about the Bible, didn't know Peter, James, and John from Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I didn't know there was a new and an Old Testament, but thank God I got in a place where the spirit of a living God was, and I saw some people like I'd never seen before. Well, they were so nice and so friendly. All I'd ever heard is somebody blaspheming and so on and, and, and calling you a bad name, but they were good to me. And I felt something I had never felt in every sin I'd ever committed. I never had felt this good. Jesus had need.